Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CSTV. We are the BBs. And this is Paul Ticking with the BBs. And kindly remember to subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and put on the notification bell. Now, Mr. B, um, in today's discussion, actually, I'm looking at the two economic models that actually the the, the the candidates for 2022 elections in Kenya are brought out. So we have the, the bottom-up approach by the UDA, and then we have this other model from Baba Scamb that actually is talking about giving Kenyans 6,000 Kenya shillings per month. If you are not employed at all, you get a job. Now, what do you think about these models? Uh, thank you so much for that question. First of all, Giving 6,000 to unemployed youth is not an economic model. That is not an economic model. But again, I want you to understand that these are what we call populist kind of politics. These are the youths who have sacrificed their, their time and everything in school. They have been told that if they go to university and pursue a degree or go to college and pursue their certificates and diplomas, their lives will change. And immediately they sacrifice and go to these high institutions of learning, then life remains the same, if not then even worse than what it was before. So if you come with such uh, statements, it sells widely to the youths. They, they tend to buy into them even without questioning them. And so my view these things is uh, solving the Kenyan economic problems is not abracadabra. It's not magic. You don't need to come and throw economic models or these promises you think that will solve our problems. In fact, some of these leaders, if they were genuine and sincere that they want to solve our problems, they will step out of politics because some of them are our economic problems. If you've been in the government and you've not provided solutions to these economic problems, and then you come and tell us that you are, you are going to come with an economic model that will solve our problems, that's a lie. After saying that, this is politics, and let us look at the political impact of it. For me, I think what can work for me the way I think is the 6,000 shillings to the youths, and I'll explain why. Remember, I've said that all these things cannot solve our problems. That's my, that's my bedrock. That's my foundation. All these things are just to lure us to vote for them. But I want to see at the pers perspective, which one looks as if it can work? Which one looks as if it can be, it can be realized? So when you say you are doing this thing called bottom-up approach, it means that you will take money and bring down to the people, you will look at Mamabogas, Boda Boda Riders, Nikokoteni, and ETC. So my question is, which model will they use to identify these low citizens, the Mamabogas? People with the Nikokoteni, people with the Piki Piki. What I tend to think is, it, will, it can be affected, but that money is likely to end up in the pockets of people who don't deserve that money. Because I don't see any model that will be scientific of which they will use to ensure that they actually single out uh, these people who are low in our society. But if you look at the 6,000 shillings, the model that can be used can be said this way. If you are a youth, maybe 25 years and above, and you don't have a job, you will receive this money. And that one can, because the government has data on people who are paying taxes, which means they have a job or a business, those one will be excluded. And since the, the government will be having the data of the years of everybody, they can be sure that this one and this one are these years based on the information on their ID. So as much as these models will never solve our problems, for me, I tend to look at it politically that which one can be achieved. And I think the 6,000 can be achieved compared to the bottom-up approach. Mr. B, I want to differ with you on this. 
And allow me to differ with you on this because we have had issues of free things. We had free education. How free is the education in this country today? Ask the parents who have children in school. They will tell you education is not free, but we parade that we have free primary education. They even talk about it everywhere. We have had the aspect of being told children will be given laptops. The thing you are telling us that the government has the data of Kenyans and it can be able to know who is a, who is a youth and who is not, who is employed, it's the same thing. The government had the data of all these of the schools in this country. It had the data of who is a student and who is not a student. But still, the laptop project didn't go. It didn't work totally. And then we are talking about the pesos are our same thing. The Chupri government the other day when they were doing their whatever, they told us about PESA Kwa said that the elderly people could be given some money. But if you make inquiry into those money and see who are living, receiving that money, and in fact, they are not receiving any amount of money, it's around 2,000 per month. And the people who are receiving the money are not the people who deserve to receive that money. This is the fact, despite the fact that the government has the data of Kenya, it knows, it knows who is above this and who is below this. So the youth constitute more than 50% of Kenya's population. That's the reality. And 90 or 80% of these youth are unemployed. They are later marking, you see. And then you say that you want to give 6,000 6, to these youth per month. Where is the government going to dump this money from? First of all, I told you, that all these abracadabra in the forms of models, they will never help us. That was my starting uh, line. And I said, what appears as if it can be achieved? For example, you have spoken about the laptop issues. It was something that could be achieved, but our government deliberately refused to actualize it. And that's why I tend to think that if Baba wants to give every youth 6,000, it can be achieved. Whether it will solve our problem is another thing I don't know. Because even this system of giving money or tokens to people who are unable, is being done in America during this pandemic. People who are unable to meet their, their daily needs are being given money. It happens everywhere in the world. My issue is about, is it able to be achieved? For your information, the older people have come up with the number of billions that they will give each constituency to make sure that these people, the mama bogas, the border border riders, the Mkokoteni people have actual money to start business. If you want to resuscitate the Kenyan economy and you don't speak about corruption, you are just playing with us. You've said, where will we get the money to give people 6,000? If our country can just make sure that there's no corruption in our country, we will be able to raise money that can turn around this country. Remember, the president himself admitted that in each day we lose two billion. Each day, the statistics around the country say that we lose nearly half the budget of our country yearly just in corruption. So if there is any leader who wants to transform our economy, don't tell us that we'll give the youth money. Because as we say, don't teach, don't give somebody fish, teach them on how to fish. Don't come up with a, a this bottom up or these strategies, they will not help us. You know, these politicians take these, uh, let's say these people who have gone to school, like for example, the older people have taken the legs of me. Me will go and then look for a, an economic model that has worked abroad. You and I have lived abroad and you know the realities abroad and in this country, they're so different. So they just cut paste an approach from a developed country and they want to come and force into a mouse, it can never work. Bottoms up approach or giving us 6,000 shillings will never be the solution to our economic problems. Our problems can be solved if they create a very humble and humble environment where we can do business, when they can zero out corruption completely from our country and just good leadership. Otherwise, these other things of 6,000 bottom up, up, trickle down, what all those is just a bracadabra and it's just a waste of time. And therefore, if I may ask you a question, if the two models are not um, going to solve the Kenyan problem, don't you think it's wrong then to say that the, the Baba model or the Baba suggestion, because you say it's not even an economic model, um, 
it's not um it's also not the right model because i'm looking at from this particular angle we live in a capitalist country so here we the thing is survival for the fittest and clinging in the aspect of giving money to the youth and i'm not saying about the even the vulnerable you gave an example of america and you and me knows that in these countries uh, the people who are get much help are the old and the children and even the way they have harnessed their taxation and everything these people pay a lot of taxes that we pay in that in kenya where most of our business people run even away from taxation and so forth when you compare when you look at that particular model by the end of today what you see is that Baba is more of going to bring more of something to do with socialism. Let me say that, where like we we just want to provide something for people who don't have. Do you think that the capitalists of the country will even give it up a chance to see the right of the day? Because if I'm not giving, if if the youth has not received um six thousand rights, it means she will be available for some manual jobs. And in that way, somebody will get money. I, I, I think you're understanding what I'm saying. So do you think it can see the right of the day? What I want our viewers to understand is, uh, I've said, there is no any economic model that can work in our country today, whether it is 6,000, whether it is bottom up, trickle down. In my view, the way our country is, it is so difficult for you to actualize that. And these are just populist kind of politics. And as I've said, many of our youths are told to work hard and go to colleges and university because when they go there, their fortunes will change. And then when they go to universities and colleges after they graduate, life becomes even harder than before. So whenever you come with such lucrative kind of wording, bottom up, 6,000, it, it, it is acceptable to the youth and you know politics is about numbers. The more you convince people, the more you are likely to win. So these people are not coming up with these things to help us. It's for their own sake and for, for them to capture power. But if really they wanted to solve our, our, our economic problems, some of them should just quit politics because they are the problem to our economic problems. And Mr. Mr. B, you alluded to the fact, when we started the conversation, you said that for you, you see the... The, 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 the Baba model working actually. And now the explanation that you are giving actually, I don't know whether it's contradicting or it's a different perspective. Because if you know very well that this model is not going to solve the problems of the Kenyan youth, why should you tell us then that the Baba model will work? When you know very well that that model, it may work for political reasons, but not solve the Kenyan problem. Because I believe that so many youths are looking at this and they will want to hear an honest opinion concerning this. Yeah, you know, this is a political discussion. Huh? And when we are looking at a political discussion, we don't look at it in a way that citizens will benefit. We also look at it of these politicians who is coming with something that can be, can be perceived to be right. And that's what I said. That, for example, the Baba's model, you can easily relate to it and say, if he's good hearted and he wants to implement it, whether it will work or not, he can say, I have the number of the youths, I have the statistics, I know these ones are above 25 years old, above, and they are not, they are jobless because from the tax and everything. So if he's good hearted and he wants to implement that, it can be implemented. As you've said, we, 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 we have the issues with the Waze who are getting some tokens, you see? It is something that you can easily plot out and give if you want. But now what I was disagreeing with the, the, implement, the, the implementation of bottoms up is, since you want to give people money, this, you don't have a, a, a scientific way of determining a mamamboga. We don't have any statistics of people who are riding mukokoteni. We don't have any statistics of people who, who are riding a motorbike. So it might be very difficult for you to come up with a plan to ensure that this money that you have, even if, let's assume you are very transparent and you want to help. It might be so difficult for you to identify these mamambogas and these kokoteni people because 
the, the, the government has no statistics about them. And that's why I was trying to speak on, on the, possi the possibility of implementing these models. But I still maintain, and I'll maintain from today onwards, these models can never solve our economic problems in Kenya. Tell us how you are going to reduce corruption. Tell us how you are going to give us an environment that we can do business easily. That one will help us economically. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. B. You outside there. If Baba's model actually works, you are likely to get 2,160,000 at the end of Baba's term. That is five years. I was trying to do my small mathematics here. But that said and done, we really need to, to look at these models in a very deeper and a critical way before we run into political stereotyping. Otherwise, kindly share your suggestion. What actually, which model works for you? Is it the Papa 6000 model or is it the rural Peruto bottom up approach? I also saw another one by Oka that is about Pesa Mufukoni. I don't understand what they mean by Pesa Mufukoni, but maybe with some time they will come and tell us what exactly they mean by Pesa Mufukoni. And I will have here my one and only list with Mr. B to tell us whether Pesa Mufukoni is also viable or not. So kindly share your ideas, share your, your suggestions, and let's meet next time in politics with the PBs. Thank you so much. Thank you.